Clichés are everywhere. Someone can try to write a story completely free of them, and they'll just sneak their way in. And that's because as annoying and lazy as some have become, they all at some point worked. To engross the audience further into the story, or just on an emotional level, they achieved exactly what the filmmakers wanted them to, and they worked so well that other filmmakers saw it and decided to use it too, happening over and over again, until they've become such a staple of storytelling that people recognize them. That's the whole reason why they've become cliches. And if we were somehow able to remove all of them from future projects, more would just crop up in their place. And of course, superhero movies are no exception. And because I watched too many of them, I've noticed quite a lot. However, there are five, or more like four and a half, cliches that annoy me like no other. Welcome to Sandwich Reviews. I'm the Talking Sentient Sandwich, and listed in no particular order, though the last one definitely irritates me the most, let's start out with the obvious one, Sky Beams. We love them. Absolutely go crazy for them. I mean, why else would they be in all of these superhero movies? All jokes aside, I could be wrong, but I'm pretty sure Raiders of the Lost Ark depicted the first special effects beam of energy shooting up into the sky, but it certainly wouldn't be the last. I think the obsession with blue sky beams began with filmmakers just wanting to convey this feeling of an immense amount of energy being released. It's weirdly coincidental that most of them are all blue, but I'm not going to get into the psychology of how different colors are used to convey a specific feeling, though that might actually be a good video essay for another day. I don't know. But all these sky beams do share eerily similar iconography, which just makes me think that there's some studio head behind the scenes pushing for it. I'm talking Iron Man, Suicide Squad, Fant Four Stick, one of the Transformers, don't ask me which one, but I'm confident one was used. Man of Steel switched up with a beam going down, and the Avengers had a sky portal, but both were still blue beams. But that's not all. You want to see a mist beam? The Amazing Spider-Man and the live-action Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles got you covered. Alright, number two, serious. Because this one does actually annoy me whenever it's unironically put into a movie or a TV show, and that's whenever a news broadcast conveniently comes on at the exact right moment to dump all of the necessary info to the main characters. And I hate it, because it always feels lazy, and there isn't a single use of it that is good. I remember making a note of this recently with Venom The Last Dance because early on, the characters gotten up to speed with some of the most forced exposition I had ever seen. The logical leaps necessary to believe that a San Francisco broadcast would make its way across the globe and be played on that monitor at that precise moment is just too much for me. And that's a particularly glaring example, but this cliche pops up more than anyone ever realizes. Even the Batman does it on three separate occasions, a movie that I will always praise for the natural flow in its writing. But even Matt Reeves couldn't stay away from this cliche. And in that, it also features the overused line where someone interrupts everyone to keep the plot going by saying, Hey guys, you gotta come look at this. But moving on to number three, and this one I don't see talked about almost at all. In truth, I'll give you that I can't think of too many examples aside from the one I'm about to mention, yet I know that this has made its way into plenty of action scenes, and that is grunting in effort while doing something that does not require it, mainly driving a car, or by the end of the action, they're out of breath as if they were pushing themselves and not a vehicle. I'll probably end up using clips from Fast and Furious because what else am I going to show while talking about driving? And that franchise is ridiculous, but I don't think they're guilty of this cliché. The example I was thinking about was in Jurassic World Fallen Kingdom, where after leaping a truck into the air to reach a boat just far enough away, Bryce Dallas Howard's character floors it and screams. And that is understandable, it's a situation I wouldn't be calm in, but following that, the back tires don't make it and the truck barely squeaks over the line. And that was also just a clear bit of bad manufactured tension, but the grunting does not help to increase any of that tension. If anything, it just gets a good chuckle out of me. But moving on to cliche 4, which kinda goes hand in hand with 5 as well. And this is one that I have brought up in a bunch of my other videos, because it annoys me to no end for a character to get an iconic costume or weapon, but only for the final shot of the movie. There's nothing I hate more than a filmmaker that won't commit to what they're doing. I already have a video dedicated to describing just how much I want to see dumb comic book accuracy, so go watch that if you haven't, but I've just seen so many movies ready to show a glimpse of the main character wielding the coolest thing in the world, only for the screen to cut to black and Linkin Park or something to start playing. 
Sorry, I've had that joke in my head for too long, and I couldn't pass it up. But the fact remains that the only feeling that I get when a movie does that is anger. In rare cases, it might actually set up a real costume that will be worn in the future, but I have been burnt by too many X-Men movies to ever get my hopes too high. Wolverine finally got his cowl and bright comic book colors, but X-Men Apocalypse's comic accurate yet still armored and tactical looking costumes was the perfect blend of respect for the dumb old stuff and what most people typically consider cool. However, Simon Kinberg and everyone at Fox decided that that would be too comic book, so they ditched the amazingly detailed and textured costumes for bland jumpsuits. I mean, sure, they're based on Grant Morrison's new X-Men run and are very faithful to that look, but maybe Maybe I would be happy with that if they hadn't just shown us stunning and distinct costumes for the entire team. But I could talk about that specific example for hours. But there are an infinite number of other stories that do this. And it's especially infuriating when you consider that the only reason why a filmmaker or writer might push something like that is because this cliche is used as a narrative weaponization of nostalgia. They use it because they know that that is what the audience wants to see. So to ensure enough support is there for a whole franchise to expand out, they leave as much teases for potential cool stuff in the future. Sometimes they actually have a plan for those teases, i.e. the Infinity Saga, but the majority of the time this cliché is utilized is to farm hype that will still only ever be lukewarm, i.e. the Multiverse Saga, but transitioning just slightly to the next and the final cliché, because it still has to do with costumes and overall looks, which is number 5, putting on an iconic outfit only for the point behind the scene to show how dumb it is and how they'll never be caught dead wearing it. It's often a cloth version and is purposefully created with a low effort look, making it even more absurd and silly so that we will agree with the character as they scoff at it in the mirror, but I have never found myself agreeing with them once. If the filmmakers go through the effort of making a comic accurate costume, even one made of cloth that is designed to look as ridiculous as possible, give me at least one action sequence with it on. Of course I say that, yet if they did give me that I would then just complain that they should have just shown me more and had them wear it for the whole movie, but that's also just me. But all you have to do is look at Deadpool or Raimi's first Spider-Man, or any number of other great superhero movies that use a dumb homemade costume as a tool to transition the character from small fry to professional. It can tie into the story and build into the satisfaction of when that character finally steps up to the role of hero. It should already be an emotional moment to begin with, but why not mark it with a literal costume change? Maybe that's why I get annoyed when this cliche is used, because as I said before, if you're making a property that is adapting a comic book, there's no reason to shy away from what made that property famous in the first place. If anything, that'll only ever bring more eyes to it. But what are your thoughts on the five superhero cliches that I think need to end? Do you agree with them, or is there one that you don't see as overdone? Or is there another cliche you would add to the list? Let me know down in the comments. And as always, thanks for watching. Make sure to leave a like, subscribe for weekly video essays and reviews, and enjoy a delicious sandwich.